Hello everyone, how are you all? We've been in a very foul mood these days due to uh, quite unbelievable things happening on our borders. I'm trying to work as much as I can, but it's so hard to focus. Most of the time I'm just jumping off the concentration mode and checking news. And that even in the middle of the night, sadly. But the work needs to go on and it's one of those things that keeps me in check and feels as normal as possible. Without it, my mental health would be in a very bad shape. And I still have a couple of new paintings that I did not share, so let's see. Some of you commented on one of the portrait videos and mentioned they would like to see my approach to darker skin and that got me thinking. I don't paint it often enough and immediately wanted to try that out. This portrait is about three weeks old and I painted it alongside that green one with white flowers in it. I often paint two at the same time. Well, I have both on my table at the same time and while one is drying, I work on another one. And this helps me to use my time in the studio to the fullest without minutes wasted. It's great to work on a couple of things at once because you can try out different things and then see what works and what doesn't. The green one worked so well for me and I posted a video just a few days after finishing it, but this one is still a question and I decided not to include it in my portfolio because the final stylization just doesn't look like it was supposed to. I even posted a question to my Instagram stories asking my followers if they thought this worked or did not quite work and while most of them voted they liked it, some agreed with me that the final outcome was not too great. I would like to put some things in perspective also because sometimes I get comments on my videos when I talk about these things saying that I do not appreciate my work and I talk badly about my work and that's something that I should not do. I'm quite sure that other artists, they have also works they were not happy with and, and they did not post them. So there is like a curation going on when we post these things to social media. I wanted you to see I do a lot of things that do not work like I hoped and I do not like the outcome, which does not mean that I do not appreciate my work or I don't like my work or I'm putting myself down. That's not it at all, but not everything that you create is gold and you have to decide which aspects of the painting you like and why and you have to think about these things and then keep them and incorporate them in your work in the long run. And that goes also for the things that you don't like. You have to analyze and find out why is it that you don't like it and then change it, try to find different solution for the problem that you had in mind when you started the artwork and then just avoid those things in the painting. And that's how your style, as people like to call it, evolves. In my videos lately, I let you in on my own thought process and try to describe which aspects of the paintings I liked and which I disliked. And I also try to find a reason why. Those are very subjective things. A matter of psychological associations and big part plays also what we already went through as a painter. I painted a lot of similar things during past years that I feel quite tired of, but other people might not be. I'm not a writer and so I don't have a skill to describe this in better words and I wish I could do that so nobody who listens to me comes to conclusion that I disrespect my own works. There is a lot more to be found on this journey and we can't stop searching and therefore allow for our process to evolve and that can't be done if we don't analyze the outcome for a little bit or at least start making conscious choices during the process. I also do not think it's a great idea to paint one artwork and then sit around analyzing it from every angle. Just paint 10 of them and then look at them and you'll find patterns of things that you enjoy so much and we'll be able to drop those that don't excite you. But without making a certain body of work, there is not much hope for effective growth. I'm also speaking from a place of someone who's been trying to make art my career for 10 years and I failed twice already and this is the third time I'm going for it. I probably made all the mistakes that you can to make this last so long, but I also did not have ideal circumstances being a single mom for a long time but I'm not going to go into much detail in this video. What I want to dedicate this video to is finding your voice or 
finding an art style as people like to call it. I feel this is not a suitable name for it since the word style doesn't quite describe what's this search all about. But if I don't name my video like that, people searching for this topic won't find it and so there's the compromise. I'm not going to tell people what they should do. Everyone needs to walk their own path on their own and figure things out. We all have different backgrounds, opportunities and situations that we live in. And for someone, a different approach might work, but I want to share things that hold me back the most during past years. I would definitely do differently and I'll try to explain why I believe that it's best to avoid them. So the very first wrong conclusion that I came to when I first started out was that I have to paint what other people like. This is one thing that I got confused with so quickly after I started to paint and post my work to social media as a new artist who is learning. When you have a small following of people who are mostly your friends and people who want to support you and your newly found hobby, they sometimes react strongly to things that you post and give you feedback that can be either positive or negative, but it can influence you greatly. For example, I assume that works they reacted positively to were the good works and those that I received negative feedback to were those that I was wasting my time with. But this is an opinion based on a very small group of people and hardly reflects on anything at all objectively. And this goes especially if you live uh, surrounded by people who are not creating by themselves. For example, my background is not in art, but I am a biology major. And so I definitely started to paint more of what received the positive feedback. A different example on the same thing would be negative feedback to what you create from this type of audience. In my first year I received a lot of comments from different people on how watercolor doesn't suit me and some of them felt like I should do acrylics instead because it's easier and sells better and so on. And only years after that I noticed that people who suggested acrylics to me were the ones who enjoyed those types of paintings themselves. And yeah, it took me a while to realize such a simple thing that opinions from others usually come from their own experiences, own preferences. And if you don't search for your own preferences, then that's a recipe for unhappiness and you won't be happy creating for too long because chances are that after a while you won't enjoy your own art. I don't know if you saw the movie Runaway Bride. It's an older movie. <laughs> I loved the scene in which Julia Roberts sits in front of all those different plates of eggs being cooked differently trying to figure out which ones she really likes by herself because she always ran away from her wedding panicking at the altar because during the relationship she somehow pushed her personality in the background and adopted habits and preferences of the guy. Of course she could not be happy living this way and so just like her I felt after the first year of painting that I want to run away from my own process and started to paint less and less and just couldn't figure out why. The price for being true to yourself though sometimes is loneliness and this is why people I think often tend to do rather things that are likable by others. It feels so weird to do things that nobody comments on and nobody else but you can enjoy but it won't be lonely for long. In time you'll attract the audience of people who enjoy your work for the same things that you do and who get excited by the same things that you are excited by and then you'll feel you did the right thing to search for what is yours and kept that in your work. I do not want to be a hypocrite while saying that though because right now I feel a lot of what I do in my art are things borrowed from other artists because I just love the look so much that I have to do it too but I believe that this is just a phase that I need to go through before I learn how to express myself properly. It's why I question the white dots in the eyes sometimes, you know those like reflections that everybody loves. Most of you would say yes those are amazing and I love them too but you know what the thought is all about now right? I also teach watercolor to children and parents sometimes ask me like could you please tell us what to do? Our child he or she only draws any characters and that's not real art how do we make it stop and get him or her to paint and draw something more serious 
my opinion about that is to let the child draw whatever they wish for as long as they want to and need to. My older daughter is 13 and she had a strong anime face for about two years and she even filled entire sketchbook with it and while doing so her hand got stronger, really used to drawing and painting regularly and then I don't even know when the transition happened but suddenly she was bored of it and started to be interested in realism and even doing her own faces from memory. The bottom line is that the joy of creating, I'm sure of that. Don't let people tell you or well let people tell you but do your own thing nevertheless. Imitation is a necessary phase and take as long as you need and have fun with it. You'll know when it's time to move on from that place and it will be a new chapter for you. But then again, what do I know? I did not study art, so take me with a grain of salt. I'm just stating my point of view and my experiences. Similar to the first problem of letting people influence what and how you paint is painting what sells when you're trying to become self-sufficient. This is a hard nut to even talk about because I highly value every customer that I've ever had that ordered a commission from me and many of those commissions I loved creating and was very satisfied with the outcome. But it's hard because the most you're pushed against the wall with the money and the more you try to rely on your art as an income, the more the market dictates what you work on and it can lead to really disliking your process and painting in general. If you try to transition into making money with your art, it would be the best idea to do it gradually, just gently with another job on the side for as long as needed so that your process can be free of duty to paint something specific. It's why my artworks were always most enjoyable for me when I had income from teaching or something completely different and doing it on the side like I'm doing still by the way and if I sell my art right now it's always just a bonus I never anymore create paintings with their worth in mind and this is so very important because even though you have less time for your artworks if you work this way you are free to experiment and learn as you please and that's a solid base for finding your voice and start speaking to a similar minded audience that will eventually buy your works for what they really are and you'll be happy when you create each of them. The pressure factor is such a retarder that it's best in the long run to avoid it. And I wish I knew that sooner and I would save myself a couple of years of trying the wrong way. Another stopper is to sit around trying to figure out what your style is. And gosh, I've done that two years ago. It was horrible. I did not produce a single thing because I was obsessed with this thought that until I figure out how I'm going to draw faces, what elements I want to use and what will be the signature coloring that I can't do a single artwork. Such a stupid thing and I had more time than I do now and should have spent it simply working on piece by piece instead of hypothetically decide on aspects that I did not fully experience yet as a painter and so I had no idea how they even felt or looked. You need to see and feel what it means to paint a certain way. No amount of thinking about it will teach you. It's basically what I finally started to do now when I lost my nerves after realizing that I'm not progressing whatsoever and felt even more disconnected from my own voice than ever before. There was a study done, I can't remember who did it and the exact amount of respondents, but they were, they were art students and they asked one group to create a single piece of art that would be as great as they can make it and the other group did not have other objective than to make a certain amount of artworks without any regard to their quality. Guess which group produced highly appreciated artworks? Yes, it was the quantity group. This was a groundbreaking discovery for me and a real encouragement to simply start working and we'll see within a year if it works out for me or not. At the same time, I found the most efficient way is not to spend too much time going to larger, more perfect artworks, but in the face of searching, focus my efforts on smaller works that can be done more quickly and once I see patterns that start emerging from my work that clearly repeat in every artwork and I obviously enjoy them, then I will be ready to move this base further and bring these subjects to a different format and try to give them a more finished look. Because this is also about time and art materials, which I do not wish to waste too much. For example, I paint for three hours every day and I can't have more because I have a family that needs a lot of attention right now. That's just a fact. 
and so I tried to use those three hours to its fullest. Some of you that have different lifestyles right now will have different approaches to what your practice looks like and that might involve larger formats but I would spend a week on one larger format and right now it gives me much more value if I do three to four pieces every week while I explore things and try to get my hand moving a little. By the way, I use the same approach to my videos on YouTube right now. I have been uploading for nearly 10 years now and very irregularly, which didn't quite allow me to develop my own voice in the videos and how I want to communicate to you. Now I try to do each video a little different and see what works for me, but also for you as I pay attention to your comments and then try to think whether what you request being done in the future is also what I want to do. And if you don't like the content, the videos or the artworks, you'll move on and that's exactly as it should be. While the content attracts its own audience that wants to hear and see exactly what I put into those videos. Some are here for the portrait, some for the tutorials, but I'll always be painting every subject because it benefits me, which can discourage some viewers to subscribe. But it's not my job to worry about that because only if I find a way how to make this content enjoyable for me too, I can sustain to create it for a long time, which is what I would love to do. What you don't enjoy ultimately gets substituted by something that you do. Some people can hold it for longer than others, but eventually you'll end up doing what brings you joy anyway. I hope that I put more perspective into what I'm doing with my personal work right now and provided you with more context and some tips on how to proceed if you are also in search for your own voice. Hope that this video will help someone. And I did like this painting until this point. The face is not perfect, but I love the coloring and the contrast of blue and those earthy tone is just amazing. But the stylization was unfortunate. I went for a white lace, which is one of the things I enjoyed to paint tremendously. And at the same time, I wanted to add abstract blue shapes around the face and paint a starry night background. I think it ended up being too distracting and I also should have balanced these colors better so that the blue did not end up so separated from the earth tones. I am tempted to redo this, maybe I'll do it one more time into my sketchbook to see what other approach would make me enjoy the artwork a bit more. You can let me know your opinion in the comments too if you wish and I'm always interested to hear which stage of your own art journey you are in right now, so feel free to share. And I just burned my lunch as I'm trying to do a video and cook at the same time, so I'm hungry today, I'm a hungry artist. Thank you so much for listening. If you made it until the end, then heads down because I rambled a lot today. We didn't have such a talkative video in a long time, but next time it's tutorial time. So we switch things up a bit over here. Okay, so I'll see you shortly. Bye.